All right, in this video, we're going to look at how we can use Google Forms to create an exit ticket to provide us some feedback about student learning in the classroom. To do this, you have a few steps um, that you need to do to get the form started. Um, but one of the cool things about using a Google Form versus another method is that you won't need to create something over and over and over again. You can either use the same form and use it indefinitely and um, just analyze the data every single day or once a week. Um, or you can make some basic edits to the form and update it for based on learning targets, changes, um, unit changes, what have you, without changing some important parts like where to find the form or how the form will look so students won't be getting confused. So to get started here, uh, we're going to go, I'm under my drive, and we're going to go to create and select form. And when that pops up, you get to choose here what the form looks like. So uh, we have a lot of different styles. This only really matters if you're going to have the kids accessing a form via a link. And this is something that you may want to think about. How am I going to get the kids to get to um, this exit ticket? Am I going to have a link on my Google site or on my Weebly site? Am I going to have um, just send out an email to kids since they can access their, their Gmail and it's going to be within there? Um, am I going to write the link on the board and have them type it in? Um, this isn't really preferable because you end up getting one of these really long keys uh, for the URL and it's, it's pretty hard for kids to get that entered exactly correct in order to find the right form. Um, so likely you're either going to be doing it through a link on your website or via email. If you're doing it via a link and they're going to go to the actual form, then you may want to put some thought into which one of these you choose. Um, but as a lot of teachers just send out an email and the kids keep the email in terms of how to get to the form itself, you might want to just select default. And after that I'm going to enter a title and um, you know you could be a, it could be a class name, it could be a teacher name, whatever you want. So I'm going to put in um, French 3 exit ticket and click OK. You'll notice up here that that now titles my form. Um, a couple of things that you want to look at, you have limited buttons in here up at the top. Um, the theme is where we just were, where you can select what the theme looks like. The response destination, we'll get to in a second, but accepting responses means that this form is on right now. So if anyone had access to this form via the link, um, they would be able to start entering things. This is kind of important because as you keep this one form and adjust it or change it throughout the weeks or months or year, um, you generally want to click this button to turn it off and make sure that people are not um, entering as you're making edits. It just kind of saves you some headaches in terms of some of the data that could be collected. Um, if they do try to, if your students do try to access the form as you're editing it and you turn this off, this is the message that you'll see. The form is no longer accepting, you know, and you can, you can um, explain to the students in terms of, okay, well, what does that mean? Or you can change it to, um, you know, uh, a personalized message. So, is, Mr. First is changing... The questions. Please try back later. Okay, and you can have that say whatever it is you you want. Um, once you turn that back on, of course, that will say. This will take you to the live form. So if you're using one of those themes and you click this, this will show you what it actually looks like. And since I haven't entered any questions yet, I don't have a whole lot here. But. Uh, some of the other settings that you want to be aware of before we actually get started with the questions are up here at the top and this is kind of important because you don't usually see this when you start it kind of starts right here and you have to actually scroll up to see this 
But if you require Pequot Lakes Public Schools login to view this form, it seems like a good idea, except for it's going to require an ISD 186 login. Um, it's important to remind you that the only the staff have that login. Uh, students, it's Pequot Patriots. So, which would mean that when I send out this form, students are not going to be able to have access. They're going to have to send me a request back. So what would happen is I send an email with the link. They click the link. The link says you do not have permission. Please request permission. They request permission, send an email back to me, and then I have to give them rights. And it ends up being very time consuming. Um, so it's generally easier to just click this and turn it off. Um, which unfortunately doesn't allow you to automatically collect their username at this time. Um, and the progress bar just shows them how far they are in the survey. Realistically, in this type of format, this form is not going to have very many questions. You don't really need that. Okay, now let's get into the actual questions themselves. In the form description here, this would be where you would put in whatever uh, instruction text you would like to put in. So, for instance, uh, this form is meant to be an exit ticket to be filled out daily by students. Um, please respond honestly. You also may want to put something in there uh, if you're collecting anonymous feedback, reassuring students that everything is anonymous, they cannot see the username, that sort of thing. Um, I found that the anonymous feedback is much more powerful as students feel safe in um, leveling some criticism. Uh, as long as you set up the questions in a way that it's going to provide you um, information, data, even if it is criticism, that is detailed enough that um, you can make adjustments to your lessons, your instruction, your practice as needed. So now we get to the actual interface here for putting in questions. Um, this is the limit of the options that you have. So it's it's kind of good because it's a pretty simple way to input different kinds of questions. So for instance, I could have um, question one be something like, uh, how well did you understand today's material? Um, and then I could have them answer in a bunch of different ways. I could leave it as multiple choice and I could selected on a scale here. Very well, not so well, I didn't get it, and so on. Um, I also could select, um, choose from a list to do the same thing, which would put in a drop down. I could put in a scale, and from one being uh, I didn't get it, to five being um, I understood. And I can select that scale to be whatever I want. I want to make sure that whatever I choose, it's a required question so that students have to answer that. Um, one of the things that, again, makes this useful or not very useful is the data that you receive. And I would argue that, um, at least in my experience, the questions have a big impact on how useful it is because it affects how students respond and therefore it affects the data that you receive. So, for instance, how well did you understand today's material? Well, today's material is what? You know, if I had um, three learning targets, five learning targets, or I was going over two completely different things where the first half of the class I was focusing on um, one area and on the second half we were doing a completely unrelated activity to prep for tomorrow, those types of things, I need uh, a response such as I understood doesn't tell me a whole lot about okay what went well what didn't so when you're thinking about how you want to set this up it's a good idea to try to make the questions as specific as possible one way of course is to just list the, the learning targets individually and put the how well did you understand up here um, and then provide some some more specific options such as you know a five instead of I understood of you know, I can teach uh, my friend who was absent today. And number one is I feel completely lost and um, I'm going to need to sit with a teacher or sit with a peer tutor or however you set up some of those interventions in your class. To make kids uh, give you a detailed answer so that you can really choose, okay, where do I need to go next? So it looks to me like 75% um, of my class is 
feeling pretty comfortable, but 25% of my class is, and then fill in the blank. And if 25% in your class is, I feel completely lost and will need extra time, um, then it gives you an idea of, okay, are there enough kids there where I need to take an extra day to do the instruction? Or can this be something where um, I provide uh, an outlet for those students to come in for extra help after school or before school or meet with a peer tutor or something like that. Um, but if you aren't getting specific information back, 75% of my class said that they understood on a 3 out of 5, 25% um, said were either 2's or 5's. Well, it doesn't really give you a good idea in the sense of, okay, how do I need to change things to help those kids that are the 2's? How many um, if there were five of those twos, what do I need to do? Where do I need to go next? Those types of things. So really think about how you want to structure this. Um, my recommendation is to, instead of giving multiple choice, and you can certainly do this, but is to open it up as text and, and make this a required question. And by that, you ask them specific things like, tell me about... Um, X, Y, and Z. And you could even structure it as a mini quiz. So for instance, um, if in French 3 we were reviewing the present perfect tense and um, I needed to know how well they could construct that tense in an unfamiliar context, which is one of our standards, I could ask them um, a question such as, take this sentence um, that's currently in the present tense and put it in the past or in the present perfect tense and then in the next question I could ask them what was troubling about this tell me more about how you came to this answer that sort of thing and make it more structured this of course will require students to spend more time um, writing their answer and thinking about their answer but the benefit for the teacher is, is that it gives you the specific information that you need to get it to really key into um, some of the achievement issues that you may have with some students and most importantly with those students who are generally too shy uh, or feel too intimidated in class or what have you to answer honestly um, to those questions if you just ask them in front of their peers. Um, once you get the questions input uh, inputted into the document here into the form then we have a couple more op options. Um, if you're adding more questions um, you can either just click add item, you can click a drop down to add specifically what kind of item you want. You can put in, one of the things that you may want to do is if you have images that you've used in PowerPoints or in your smart notebook that are explanations, um, or if you want to put in um, specific, here's what we were working on on the board, I took a picture of it and I want to put, I put this in here and I want to understand how well you understood it, etc. You can do that by clicking this and adding adding um, specific image files. You could even add video files, those types of things. For most people, it's just going to be basic text. But you can click Add Item and you can select what you want. Um, if you're going to be doing kind of a learning target-based thing where it's the same every time, you can click this button, which is Duplicate. It will just duplicate the question right on down the line. And now you'll have um, two questions with uh, in there that are going to be the same and you can edit it. The trash can of course is delete. Uh, finally, finishing up, I got about a minute here. Um, the confirmation page is what they see once it's done. You can either show a link to another response, publish, allow responders. For most of these, you want them off. Show links would allow them to submit another response to do the form over it won't erase their prior one. If you click this one, it will allow them to go back and change their answers. Um, and then this last one you definitely want off, which is this would take them to everybody's answers. So it's my recommendation that you leave all of them off. Um, the only one would be maybe if you want them to, to uh, be able to submit another response. Now, and then send form. Send form works the same way as sharing. So you would enter either student emails in individually or if you went through the process of creating groups for your classes, you could do it that way. 
Now the question is, where do these go? And um, up here, choose response destination is um, going to be that decision. So if you click that, what comes up is, no matter what, all of the responses will go into a spreadsheet. And you can either have them go into a new spreadsheet, or say, for instance, I have a form for French 1, French 2, and French 3. I could have them all go into one spreadsheet on different tabs. Um, so that way I could keep track of all of my data within one source. For most people, though, it's going to be um, just setting up a new one and you want to you wanna split it up. So I'm going to hit Create, and it's going to create in my drive. If I click back to my drive, you'll see the form here, but if I click again and refresh, you'll see now that it says Responses. And what you'll get in the response document is uh, the time and date, and then the questions that you supplied. Now, if you're doing anonymous, you'll just have the questions. If you do not want to do anonymous for some reason, if you want the students to input their names, you would create the name as a question. So instead of right here, I would put in um, student first name. I would select short text, and they could input that in there. Um, that, of course, again, is a choice. In either spot, you can get an idea of how many people have responded, either there or in the form itself. It shows you how many people have responded right here. From that, you can jump from the form. If I turn it on, okay, now it's accepting. I can get a summary, which gives me some charting. Um, the summary is useful or not useful depending on how you're taking responses. If you're collecting mainly text or longer text answers, like paragraph level answers, it's not going to be as useful because it's just going to give you a kind of a, uh, amalgamated grouping of all of the text answers. Um, if you're using multiple choice or scales, it'll actually give you some charting, which can be useful. Um, and you can also delete all the responses. So say, for instance, you wanted to use the same generic one every single day of how well did you understand learning target one, two, three, and you don't actually put them in the form. You could use that every single day, get the information, and then after you've analyzed that and before the students need to do it again, you can hit delete all responses and it'll take them out. If you want to chart them more over time, you would just leave them in here um, and then you could sort you can sort from within the spreadsheet based on the date um, and then you could also sort in there based on student first or last name so if you did want them to collect their names you could track how a student feels that they're doing um, over a period of time if they feel that they're improving if they feel even after invent interventions and peer tutoring and whatnot that they're still struggling um, you know you can get an idea of of how things are going either at the student level or if you did it more anonymously at the entire class level. Um, so that's it's kind of a powerful tool. Either way, when you send out the form and you share it, your two options are sending the form in the email. The link that is included to, in the email is going to be right here and students can click it. That link will always stay the same. So if you go back the next day and change the form to update it to today's, these are today's or this week's learning targets, um, the link isn't going to change. So the kids aren't going to have any problems finding the form again. Similarly, the um, if you just decide to use the above link and copy and paste it to your website, and you say you have a class page, this is my French 3 web page, I and could put a link on there that says exit ticket, I could put this URL in there, and with that link it will not change so I can go back and edit the questions and the kids always know where to go I go to the same spot I click on that link and it's not going to change so whichever way that you want to do it um, it doesn't really matter but kids should always be able to find the exit ticket fill it out and when you get data back you can analyze not only how well things are going but you can kind of um, customize your exit ticket over time to make sure that you're getting the specific feedback necessarily necessary that will help improve your instruction um, and the student achievement in your class. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, this has been Google Forms for Exit Tickets.